Shalom, shalom, beloved. Hi, welcome. Welcome to the Shulamite Bridal Tent of Meeting, where there will be worship and praise, where there will be scripture reading, where there will be reflections on the blood of Messiah and much more. Holy Spirit leads this meeting. This is not man made, fabricated pre-planned scheduled it's totally on the wings of the holy spirit amen hallelujah let me just find a song to open up in worship praise god and i thank you thank you jesus for those of you that are coming on kindly put yourself on mute because i am already recording to send this to those who cannot attend and be with us right now. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise and thank the Lord. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name. We give you glory, Lord. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for. Thank you. 
for all of the provision, for all of the protection, for all of the mercies and the grace that He showers upon us day after day, step by step, breath by breath. Thank you, Lord, for creating us in your image and likeness and for loving us, for forgiving us, and guiding us as your own. Jesus, we give you the glory. Oh, Lord God, you are so awesome. He is an awesome God. And let us rejoice in the fact that he is our awesome Father, our awesome Savior, our awesome Comforter and Teacher. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. We just bless you, Lord God. Hallelujah. We lift your name on high. We exalt you, Lord. We extol your name. Hallelujah. Thank you. Let us praise the Lord who is our rock. He trains our hands for war and he gives our fingers skill for the battle. Hmm. We praise the Lord who is our rock. Our rock. Hmm. I was reflecting today on the fact that we say that Jesus Christ is the rock. He is the rock of our salvation. He is the foundational cornerstone rock that we stand on. And I kept seeing the word rock and how we individuals, we are each living stones. We are a part of the rock. It is like a parallel of the shepherd with the sheep. And there is the Lord our rock and we the living stones, his people. And I saw the word rock as an acronym for the remnant of Christ's kingdom. That's what came to me on and off today. On and off, the remnant of Christ's kingdom for the word rock. And that today is being seen more and more as the times are getting darker and darker where is the light of christ that is getting brighter and brighter it's in the remnant it's in the people that are praying and dedicating over and over their lives and their time seeking the lord humbling themselves before the lord seeking him with all their heart it is the remnant that is arising. 
It is the remnant that is pursuing and standing on the rock in all of the battles. It is the remnant that is interceding and standing in the gap for all the issues and all the evils that are out there as we praise and worship the Lord, which is very much part of warfare. For having done everything, stand therefore. We stand on the rock. We stand on the rock, Jesus. Jesus, the rock. Jesus, the living word. We stand on the living word of God, who is the rock, the cornerstone, the foundation. And we are the remnant of Christ's kingdom. We are working for the sake of promoting the kingdom of God. That is who we are. Psalm 144. Praise the Lord who is our rock. He trains our hands for war. He gives our fingers skill for the battle. Mm. My Lord. Open the heavens, Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains so they billow smoke. Hurl your lightning bolts and scatter your enemies. Shoot your arrows and confuse them. Enemies of the Lord are also our enemies. Reach down from heaven and rescue us, Lord. Rescue us from deep waters, from the power of our enemies. And we will sing a new song to you, O Lord. We will sing praises to you. You give victory. You grant victory to us, to kings and to us, your people. You rescue us from the power of the enemy. Oh, Lord, you're so good to us. We thank you. We praise you. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord, from the depths of our heart. We give you all glory and honor, praise and thanksgiving. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. So there you have it. Praise the Lord who is our rock. He's our rock. He's always the same. The eternal one, the God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, never changes. He's the eternal one. He always was. He always will be. He says what he means. He means what he says. And when he has said it, it will come to pass. It will come to pass. His word is truth. His word is a person. That person is Jesus, the Son of God, who is God, the Holy Three in One, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Three in one, the essence of God, one God manifest in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for taking us, taking us into your care, for calling us the sheepfold. You are the great shepherd. You have such mercy and grace, Lord God. Such mercy and grace. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you, remnant arise and listen well. Listen well, people. Listen well to you that are on the fence about whom you should serve. Listen well, all those that think you can be friends in the world and still be part of the kingdom of God. It's a warning to wake up, to wake up. It's no longer time that people can be playing church. It is time to realize that the church is just not a building of four walls where we go to warm a seat 
be it a half hour, two hours, three hours, whatever your congregation does. It's not just a matter of warming a seat. Mm -mm. Nope. Can't be playing church anymore. Can't go looking all cleaned up and my act is together and everything is just wonderful and great. Mm -mm. And then live however you want to the other six days until the following Sunday. And a lot of you are not even going on Sunday anymore because you think you're all set. Oh, well, I, you know, I said a prayer and isn't that, isn't that it? I mean, isn't that all there is? I mean, I said that prayer when I was like, I don't know, 10, 15, 25, and you know, I can do whatever I want do whatever I want because I'm saved. Rude awakening. Rude awakening. The Christian life is not just you say a prayer one time and then you're set for the rest of your life and you can live however you want. That's not what it's about. That's not what it's about. Accepting the Lord Jesus Christ and repenting of all sins and renouncing all the evils that we have partnered with in our past, all the things we have dabbled with, all the things that we did that we know in our heart of hearts was wrong, need to renounce it and need to repent. And it doesn't stop there. It's a daily, daily waking up, humbling ourselves before the Lord, walking with him, reading his word, praising him, worshiping him, listening to him, being guided by his Holy Spirit, and knowing that because of him, because of what Christ did on the cross, that is the divine exchange he took all of our sin. He took all of the filth and sin. He took all of the sickness and disease. He took everything that is evil and fallen and sickness and torment. He took it and he nailed it to the cross. He who knew no sin became sin so that we could wear the cloak of his righteousness that we could have salvation a free gift it is not something that's earned it's not something that you and i do to earn salvation for if we could earn it then it's a man thing that we could boast and that means he died in vain. The only way that there is forgiveness for sin is the shedding of blood. And we see from our Hebrew roots in the study of the First Testament that the Israelites, the Jewish people, accepted the Torah and practiced all the feasts of the Lord. And that included building the tabernacle that included the ritual of killing goats and bulls as sacrifice, sacrificial rite for the forgiveness of sins. And it had to be done over and over again, for it was only once a year in the Holy of Holies with the high priest that this was performed and done. But you see, Christ came came as a man, came like you and I. He lived without sin, never, ever had sin. But he's the eternal one with the Father. He too is God. Second person of the Godhead became man. The word became flesh, the word incarnate. Sinless, spotless, and a shedding of blood so that all men's sins could be forgiven once and for all. 
It's not a repeated act. He's not re-crucified every day, every week, every month, every year, every decade, every century. He died once and for all. And the choice is ours. The choice is ours. Are we going to serve the Lord? Choose this day whom you're going to serve. Choose this day. What did we choose today? Who did we choose? Did we serve him in, in every way? In all the things that we chose? All the things that we read? All the things that we may have watched? on the web, TV, DVDs? Did all the words that came out of our mouth, were they blessings? Were they things that we would actually speak into the ear of Almighty God? And what about our other actions? Did we show kindness, compassion, or did we just get filled with self to say, I'm so important, I just have to cut you off and I'm sorry, I just can't help you today. A lot of the attitude we see today, sadly saints, is I'm too important for anybody else but me. That's not a kingdom-minded individual. We can't be so filled with self and think that we're doing kingdom work. In fact, being so full of self is really a major sign of pride. And we know pride brings about a fall. The fall that we should take is not because of pride, but because we choose humility to fall on our knees in reverential fear to our Lord. Not because of pride, but we should be choosing to fall in humility, to fall on our face, to worship. That's how the remnant church should be falling. But it's sad to see a lot that are outside, outside of the remnant. They call themselves Christians, but they're by name only. Their actions, the fruit, the fruit does not line up. It just doesn't line up. And we are, we are to judge the fruit. And the Lord tells us to judge the fruit. And one day I am going to do uh, the full teaching that will include the scriptures that we are to judge. We're to be our brother's keeper. And who are the brother? It is the man or the woman that is in the kingdom serving with all of us. If we see them sin, we need to go and say, in love, this is not an action. This is not something that the word of God would tell us to do. This is not something we should be doing. Bring it to their attention. That's being the brother's keeper. If they refuse to listen, you go back with another person, with a witness. And if they still don't listen, you bring them to the elders of the church. And if they still don't listen, they're turned over. They're turned over to be sifted as wheat. Okay? And we pray for them and we stand in the gap that they will come to their senses 
just like the prodigal son who's out there. He came to himself and he realized and he said, what am I doing? I'm in a pigsty, pig pen, and I'm eating the same garbage as the pigs when I have a father who loves me. And I just battle and rebel and leave and go my own way. And I spend on all kinds of sinful ways to try to fill up pleasure for myself. And look where it got me. Got me in a pigsty, eating with the pigs, eating the food the pigs are eating, which is far from gourmet. He came to himself. The scripture reads, he came to himself and he said, I am going to go back to my father and my father's house. And we see how that parable, how beautifully the return, how the father ran to greet him always a son always so if you've received christ as lord and savior you're always a son there's no divorce from him being your father once you're in the kingdom but if you're living in the pigsty if you're eating the scraps and you're not experiencing the glory of God because you've allowed things ungodly in your life or my life. He's waiting. He's waiting for us. He's waiting for us to go before him in true sorrow and repentance to welcome us back into the grace and the fullness he never stopped loving us, never, never stops loving us. He doesn't divorce us as a parent or a brother, but he'll stand aside. He'll stand back and he'll say, I've given you free will. I've given you free will. Mm, I've given you free will. Choose what you're doing. I say, saints, we stay the course. We stay focused on him, regardless of what the times and the signs are saying. The way of the world. Oh, it's 2018. Oh, this is free and this is wonderful. And look at this fruit. Oh, just take a bite. You're gonna find out it's really special. Mm. So was the apple in the garden. And look what happened. So just because styles and customs and celebrations and different things in this world are all changing and everybody just thinks it's wonderful. We have to test the spirits and we have to test the fruit. We have to be careful what we take in. You know the expression, garbage in, garbage out. I think we've all experienced a share of garbage in. Prayerfully, we've all been purged for garbage out so that we can be filled filled with the holiness of the Lord. The Lord tells us in his word, be holy as I am holy. Well, what does that look like? It doesn't look like what's out there. Oh, it's 2018. Try this. This is a delicious fruit. And try this fruit. Oh, this is really good. Oh, this is so different. Oh, just relax. It's 2018. You know, live, let live. Do what you want. Okay, if that's your free will choice, but the road is narrow and there's only one way to the Father on that narrow road and that's through Jesus Christ. 
And if that's what we as Christians, as the remnant church are living, it's his word. It's his word. It's his word that we follow. It's his word that is the manual, the manuscript that keeps us on the path, on the right way. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Look for the good fruit. Look for the good fruit. Test every spirit and don't be swayed. Don't be double-minded. Well, I can do this today and repent tomorrow. Really? Abusing the mercy of God? Trampling the blood of Christ? Because, oh yeah, he's all merciful. He shed his blood. I know he'll forgive me and I'll, I'll just do this, you know, a couple of weeks, a couple of times, maybe a year. I'll just indulge trampling the blood, slapping his face, by abusing his mercies. Let us not go there. Please, let us not go there. Let us hold the sacred blood, precious as it is, his name above every name, precious as it is. My God, glory to God. The blood. The blood. Going into the blood by Rona Sparopoulos. I'm going to read chapter 17. A sacred place of honor. There is a sacred place in the heavens where my blood is kept from there, it is released onto the earth when it is called for. Did you hear that? His blood is kept and stored in heaven and it's released when it's called upon. How beautiful. It is a treasure. It is regarded with deep respect because its power is known by the heavenly inhabitants. The living creatures, the 24 elders, all the angels, the choirs of angels, all the divisions of angels, they all have a deep respect for the blood, the blood of Messiah. It is in an area set apart for honor. It is similar to places of great honor on the earth where men and women are honored for their great achievements on their great valor, but it is of much greater beauty. It is kept in a circular open portico with exquisitely modeled columns. At the top of each burns an open flame. The blood is kept in a big, shallow, golden chalice on a pedestal made of molten gold, which moves within its form and murmurs honor to that which it maintains. There are mighty hosts that surround it that are like a wall of fire. They stand like sentinels, quietly giving honor. My blood, as it lies in the chalice, does not look like blood wood on earth, but it looks like a vibrant cloud of incandescent light. And it continually speaks to me of mercy. In the mystery of heavenly things, I am still in my blood, and it still is a part of me. So, it speaks what is in my heart. When you look at situations and people, look through the wall of my blood, your attitude will change to one of mercy. I need that. I know I'll share, I have situations where I get impatient sometimes. 
And I'm like, oh, please, please just move on. I don't have patience or time for this. I think that within, I do. I say, I don't have time for this today. I have so much to do. I have places to go. I have meetings. I have this. I have that. Family, personal, on and on. And that gets in my head. Oh, get out of my way. Excuse me? I'm saying that to me. Excuse me? So when I look at the situations and people, I'm going to start looking through the wall of his blood so that my attitude will change to one of mercy. I want more of his mercy in my attitude, in my heart. You see, even in my judgment, says the Lord, I remember mercy. It is like a sweet oil, a fragrance that pervades the atmosphere and changes hearts and situations. Jesus. Mercy cries loudest when the deeds are the foulest, until mercy can no longer prevail and the wheels of consequence begin to turn. But the cry of mercy vibrates through the heavens because it is spoken through my blood. When the councils of heaven meet to determine events on earth, the blood speaks. It is a reminder to a long suffering God. It is a reminder to the justice keepers in heaven. Sometimes mercy means that a life has to be taken to spare other lives. Sometimes a destiny has to be lost to spare the destiny of others. Mercy has a profound quality when it is combined with godly wisdom. Who can hold the scales of justice? It requires a steady hand and a merciful heart, but those scales in heaven have within themselves the patent for judgment and mercy and are instilled with the wisdom that comes from the Godhead. In your intercession for a nation, remember mercy. In your prayers for one who struggles or is lost, remember mercy. It is a sound that speaks with the same voice that my blood speaks, a voice greater than that of Abel, greater than a voice crying out for vengeance. In your wrath, Father, remember mercy. The quality of mercy is not strained. It is an ebb and flow like the tides of the sea, but it reigns supreme like a king holding out his scepter to his wife and Queen Esther. It was mercy that saved a nation on that day. Let me read from Habakkuk 3, verse 2. O Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. O Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known. In wrath, remember mercy. And from Matthew 5, 7. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to me through that reading. I know where I need more of your mercy, Lord. And I am sorrowful and I repent for the areas where I have failed. To individuals, to groups, to family, to friends, to neighbors, to strangers. And let us all remember that we all came from a place where we were begging for mercy. That first time meeting the Lord and having conviction of who he is and who I am, and how I did fall to my knees and how I wept. I wept 
because the understanding that he filled me with of how holy, holy, holy a God that he is and what a miserable sinner, a worm, God, the reality of the filth, the shame, the guilt. I cried mercy and he heard me and he picked me up. He heard the prayer of repentance and he forgave me. He's no respecter of persons. And he'll do that for anyone and everyone who does the same. And he is so long suffering for he wants to see none perish. So I'm not challenging. I'm prayerfully begging all who hear this message that do not know him to come to him and find peace and mercy and love, love, love so perfect, so unconditional, so everlasting. There is no love like it in all the earth. And I pray that you find it, that you're filled with it. I feel led right now that we pray for nations. I like the way it is um, translated in the New Living Testament. So let us carry all the nations. Let us remember that as we speak the living word, remember, saints, this is fact. When we speak the word, the angels of God are activated. They hear it and they're activated and they go out and they carry it to whomever, to wherever, including all the nations. They will see to it that this word will accomplish all for that which it was sent, because it will not return to our God void. It will not. It will not. It will produce. Believe it. May God be merciful and bless us. May his face smile with favor on us. May your ways, O oh God, be known throughout the earth, your saving power among people everywhere. See it in your spirit, right there, right there. May your ways be known throughout the earth, your saving power among people everywhere, and just see the Lord sending out myriads of angels to see that word accomplished. You see, everywhere, people everywhere. May the nations praise you, O God. Yes, may all the nations praise you. Let the whole world sing for joy because you govern the nations with justice and guide the people throughout the whole world. May the nations praise you. Oh God, yes. May all the nations praise you. Then the earth will yield its harvest and God, our God, will richly bless us. Yes, God will bless us and people all over the world will fear him. Amen. Will fear him with that reverential fear. One of the seven spirits manifested of the Godhead, the seven spirits of our God, one of them is fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord. Thank you, Father, that people all over the world would reverentially fear you. Wow. Let it be, Lord, as your angels are sent out to accomplish this prayer for the nations, Lord God. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus.
We do enter his gates with thanksgiving. We enter his courts with praise. We give thanks. We give honor. There it is in Psalm 103, verse 20. Praise the Lord, you angels, you mighty ones who carry out his plans, listening for each one of his commands. And each one of his commands are right here. Yes. Praise the Lord, you armies of angels who serve him and do his will. Praise the Lord. Everything he has created, everything in all his kingdom, and let all that you and I am, let us praise the Lord. Praise him and thank him. Praise him and thank him and give him glory, for he is worthy of his reward. Praise you, Lord God. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord God. Praise you, Lord, for all those in the depths of despair, for all those in the depths of depression, for all those whose minds are tormented day and night and night and day. Oh, dear Jesus, we cry out in your name and we take the authority that you have given us and we silence that enemy in the name of Jesus and we say, loose the people of God. We plead the blood of Christ over them and we say to you, spirits of darkness and torment and depression, oh, torment and depression hopelessness despair you are bound and rebuked as you are on your way to the dry place never to return in the name of jesus i am unmuting everybody that's joining us tonight to hear agreement There we are. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. We're all unmuted. We are being recorded for the teaching and prayers to go out. Thank you, Jesus. Lord God, we thank you that those who are loosed from these spirits of darkness that would hang over with depression and despair, we speak now to the spirit of death, of suicide, of overdose. In the name of Jesus, we come against you in full authority given to us in the powerful name of Jesus and by his stripes and blood and his word, we rebuke you. Take your hands off of God's property and be bound as you go to a dry place, never to return. The blood of Jesus mm. is against you. Father, we come against, we come against the generational curses. In the name of Jesus, we plead your blood and mercy for these things to be cut off. Saints, we need to know our authority. We need to know the authority in his name, his word, and his blood that he has given to us to cut this off, to send them to the dry places. The generational curses we need to know, discern, identify, and we need to do the work. We need to do the house cleaning. The Lord has it on my heart to do that teaching. When I am back in Massachusetts, I will be doing the first workshop, and it'll probably take several workshops. On and, breaking generational curses for the emotional diseases, for the emotional torments, for the addictions, for the alcohol addiction, for the gambling addiction, for the drug addiction, for the sexual promiscuity addiction, the pornography, the fornication, the adultery 
all generational curses and diseases that need to be removed by the power of his name and blood through the authority in him that he has given to us, he in us, as we speak and take authority and command that they loose and they go to a dry place bound never to return, that we seal it in the blood of Jesus, that we pray the infilling of the Holy Spirit and the virtues and the fruit of the Spirit, the peace of God to fill them, the joy of God to fill them. You don't want to leave the house empty once a house is delivered and cleaned and swept. It must be filled with something. Fill it. People need to be discipled and taught. It needs to be filled constantly with the Word of God, with the presence of the Holy Spirit, with daily communion and time with the Lord, reading His Word, praising Him, thanking Him, listening to worship music, reading Selah on a scripture. You don't have to do a book a day. Even if you just do a scripture a day or one chapter reading. Yes. Really, really meditate it. Put yourself in the scripture. What if that was me? Whoa, that was me. That was me. I was a Mary Magdalene. Oh my God. He received me at his feet when I received that conviction in my heart. Oh God, that moment of deliverance, healing, and salvation. There is nothing like it in the world. Peace with God, life in God, joy in God. Knowing how he cares and how he loves and how he provides and how he guides. There's nothing like it. We'd love to scream it from the mountaintops and we will do the best we can as his remnant to teach, preach and reach the lost by the power of his Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer and praise and thank you, Lord, for you, who you have, we are to pray. We are to pray, saints, whether we like it or not, whether we like them or not, whether we like or not, we are commanded to pray for those in office of government and high positions. Let us pray for our president, President Trump, his wife, his family, Vice President Pence, his wife and family for the office that they hold, the highest office in this nation, in the United States of America. Father, we plead your mercy and the blood of your son Christ to be over them day and night and night and day. We pray that you send out ministering angels, warfare angels, Lord, that there be a ring of fire of your blood protecting them, protecting the White House, protecting the Capitol, protecting all government seats, Lord God, in every city, in every town, in every state, across, east, west, north, south, covered, covered, that your love, your creation is just showing revelation of the great creator God that you are, open eyes to see, to be thankful. Thank you. So thankful that we live in this nation. Bless the leadership, Lord God. Godly men that want to see godly ways restored to this nation. This nation was founded and is a Christian nation. That is how it was founded. 
and we have opened the doors through legislation and laws to allow freedom of religion to all. And all are free to worship how they choose. Touch not God's anointed, for it is God's people that uphold this amendment. We want to see people free, free to choose. Yes, we have our conviction of our faith, and we proclaim and declare it, and we no more want to be stomped out than anyone else. Let there be freedom of religion. Let there be freedom of religion. We as Christians proclaim Christ and the cross and the Trinity, the Holy Three in One. We have our faith. We stand with our convictions. This is the freedom of religion. Our country was founded as a Christian nation where they came to be free to worship. Let it remain that we are free to worship. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for this nation. Thank, Thank you. you for the the multicultural, for all the blend of the ethnicity, Lord God. Thank you. Let us find that safe haven in you, Father God. Yes. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Let us find unity in your Holy Spirit. Yes. Let us find unity resting in the peace in the arms of Messiah, your Son, our Lord and Savior that we be a people, Lord God, whether Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, Charismatic, Catholic, um, what else is out there? There are so, so many splittings and so many divisions. Mm -hmm. Can we just drop all the facade? Can we just drop all the um, man-made laws and the doctrines of demons that religion loves to attach itself to? <laughs> just doctrines of demons oh look what man did we don't want to look at what man did man can't really do anything let's look to god and see what god has done is doing and will continue to do amen man in and of himself is just a dust ball mm -hmm. that will eventually return to dust but the spirit man within us which is in the image and likeness of God, will return to him and have an eternity. So choose this day whom you will serve and be thankful that we are who we are. In America, I don't care about skin color. I don't care about different languages, different colors, different ways of cooking food. I, I don't. I just want to see God's love and peace and unity for coming together. Amen. And as a Christian, I pray for that coming together in the unity of his Holy Spirit. I want all people to know the love of the God that I know and that you know. It's as simple as that. But once I was lost, but now I see. Yes, I grew up in a denomination. Hello. I had a couple of experiences in a couple of cults hello <laughs> searching in all the wrong places oh god help me and thank god he heard my cry and he delivered and he <laughs> opened the eyes and he shed the shingles and, and the blinds and that i thanked him and repented that i had lost my way but for a reason for the season in all things because what the men, enemy means for harm the lord will turn around for good so you're going to gain not only deliverance and healing but you're going to gain wisdom knowledge and understanding for those who might get ensnared in that likely trap so that we can share what the lord has done for us and we too can help each other through those dark times and places as the Lord heals and delivers. 
So Father, thank you. We're in a free country. We're free to worship you. We're free to, to love you and just free all around. And we thank you for the president, the vice president and all the offices, the governors, the mayors, the councils, all those steps, the Congress, the cabinet, uh, all those, I, I can't even name them all. And um, I'd be lying if I said I could. So let's just say, Lord, cover them all. <laughs> you know who they are, praise God. And Father, we pray for Israel. We lift up Israel, we love Israel, we stand with Israel. We love Israel. Oh, Lord God, as you love her, as the mountains surround her, so do you, Lord, with your spirit and your love. You surround Israel. We pray for their hearts to open. Read Isaiah 53 and see Yeshua HaMashiach that has already come as our prophets, as our prophets have told us, the suffering servant has come, has come. And he is coming again. Oh Lord, that your protection and your provision always be with Israel. That your Holy Spirit, Ruach HaKodesh, that you will constantly continue to work on the hearts of the fathers and the mothers and the children. Yes, Lord, as they go through the ritual of the feasts of the Lord that their eyes will open through the power of your spirit to see Yeshua in every feast of the Lord. They will see the foreshadow of Yeshua Messiah, that they will go to Isaiah 53, that they will not ignore that chapter, that their eyes will be opened, that they will see. Amen. Oh, your word says, Lord, all of Israel will be saved. And we bless her in your mighty name every highway, byway, every family, every building, every heart, every marketplace, every play area, every school. We pray for Benjamin Netanyahu. Thank you, Lord, bless him. Keep him as a godly man seeking your heart and your ways. In Jesus' name we pray, hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We lift up our pastors. We lift up our home church, our pastors, their wives, their families. We ask for covering. We ask for protection and provision for them, Lord God, for ministering angels, for the blood to be with them always. Always, Lord God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you. For the church growth, Lord God, not for numbers, not because we want to see a uh, this big it's because we want to see souls one for the kingdom that's what we want to see we want to see healing lines prayer lines deliverance lines lines for discipleship where the pastors and those in within the church family that have the gift of teaching the gift of prophecy the gift of evangelism the apostles and the prophets that these gifts and these offices will be allowed to open up and to operate. It's not the one man show. It's not Mar and Pa Kettle and only the same DNA that sings on the worship team and, and does the prayer team. It's the body. It is the body of Christ. It is the DNA of Messiah. It is all, he has given to all his people gifts fruits and talents for the purpose of the growth of the kingdom, for the, for the discipling to, to teach, preach, equip, and to send out so that it can go on and on and on in Jesus' name. Bless our pastors, our home church, and all of the ministries within each of our home churches, Lord God. We thank you, Father. Thank you. And praise, and we give you praise, and we give you thanksgiving. Praise reports, prayer needs, anything at all, anything to, to ask for agreement in prayer or a praise report, it's, it's time, the line is open for that. 
And we thank you, Lord. Thank you. Your glory. Give you praise. Hallelujah. Lord, I continue to pray for for Rick, my son, that you'll just continue to speak to his heart and draw you back to him, Lord. God, I pray for all the prodigals, all those that are out there on drugs and that that are living the lie that the enemy has told them, that they have agreed with the lies that he has told them. Lord, I just pray that you bring truth into their lives and that you let your light shine and that you bring people in their path so that they will see you and that they'll see your light and your truth because you're the way, the truth, and the light. Yes, and I just pray that you'll bring them back. And Lord, I just also pray that you'll you'll bring Rick back to um communication with me, Lord. That whatever it is that blocks him from wanting to speak to me, get together with me, that, that you'll just bring that back, Lord, that, that communication, that relationship, restoration for us, Lord. And that he will he will forget all the lies that were given to him and show him the truth in all those lies that he's been told as he's been growing up. Lord, I'm not sure where he is at today, if he's still doing the, the drugs that he's been into, Lord, but you know where he is. You know where his heart is at and what he's been doing. And I just pray for deliverance for his life and that you will bring him closer to you than he's ever been. And yes. that he will come back to you and have that relationship restored with you, you especially first. Um, and, and that you'll just let him live for you, God. And that, that you'll also bring people in his life, that they'll see a change and that he will be a witness for you, Lord. And, and that the people that have seen what he's lived, that that will be a witness to show the power that you have in, in him. That he'll allow that. Thank you. Yes, Thank Lord. You. Yes, Lord. Thank you for hearing and answering this prayer in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. I lift up Linda, who's um, who's poured in $38,000 into her mouth to have dental implants and a permanent bridge. <clears throat> started with discomfort here, and a week later started with discomfort here, and went to the dentist yesterday to hear, you have two whopping infections and you need to go on antibiotics, you need to have surgery, we need to remove the permanent bridge and we need to remove the implants. She's very, very, very down and depressed and just feeling kicked to the lowest point with everything else that's going on in her life. Um, So, just to agree and lift her up in prayer to say that, Father, we just pray that she's going to the right dentist and yes. the right procedures to be done and the right antibiotic to knock out what she was yes, told God. that started as a gingivitis gum infection that caused the infection to the implants. We just pray for total healing in the area that is affected, abscessed, whatever it is, Lord God, that you will shrink it to naught, that she'll have no ill effect or allergic reaction with the antibiotic, but it will perform the job for which it was created to do, Lord God. And we pray that the dentist will be able to restore the bridge and the implants, Lord God. And we pray that insurance or something will help cover this because of the situation. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you. Amen. I lift up all our ministries that we have as individuals for all the outreaches that we do. We don't necessarily need to have a ministry, quote unquote, that has a name and a and a uh, uh, a place. It's the places where we go with the temple that the Lord has created with His Spirit and dwelling you know meeting people one-on-one every day that's ministry that's ministry because we are all called as a royal priesthood we are all called as ministers in the word of god we are all ministers so wherever our temple goes the spirit of god in us goes and we work together with him and if he nudges us give this one a smile uh you know i i have some books or or pamphlets that i say here 
take this. This is this is this is for encouragement. This is to give you hope and encouragement. And get you know just a smile or a glance. That could be the biggest sign of acceptance and love that that individual has seen in who knows how long in their life. And we do it all as unto our King in Jesus' name. All the ministries and for all the ministers that we are. I lift up Heart of Hope, Tammy, Anna, Donna, Patricia, for all their prayer needs that we meet every uh, Monday morning at 8 o'clock on Tammy's prayer line on Zoom. And we have communion and the needs that are outpouring. We pray for every need to be met, Lord, in emotional, physical, spiritual, financial, and education. They are pursuing degrees, pursuing certificates. They are studying, Lord God and Holy Spirit. We pray that they will have memory to retain and memory to call forth for their testing and certification in Jesus' name that there'll be healing to family members who need physical healing, who are having surgery, Lord God, and for all things that you know that we, we need and ask prayer for, Lord God. And we bless you and thank you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Sounds like somebody's ripping paper or blowing steam or something. You hear it? That's a strange noise. And I'm looking yeah. at both of you and you're very, very still. So I know it's not anything that any of us are doing. It's just a strange sound. But thank you. Thank you. Let's, let's just press in for another minute in the name of Jesus and search our hearts. Is there a prayer need? Is there somebody that you know in the family, for yourself, the neighborhood, the workplace. Somebody with stomach trouble is being healed. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
Urra, ne, 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 Thank you, Lord God, for the intercession and the travail, Father. We travail at your throne. Yes, Lord, for all those prayers, prayed and unprayed, Lord God, you know our hearts. You know each heart, Lord God. You know all that we carry upon our hearts. You know all that we carry. Lord, every time we pray in the spirit, every time we pray in the word, every time we say love, every time we just come and praise and worship, you know everything that is on our heart. Yes. Oh, Lord God, you answer every prayer before it even becomes a spoken word on our tongue. Oh, to give you the glory and the praise. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. What a wonderful Father. What an awesome God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We praise you and give you all glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Oh, the sweet presence of the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Father, for your sweet presence. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. I'll tell you, I'll share with you, I, I have an anointing oil from Abba Anointing Oils, and it's called His Garments. And I think it's Aloe, Casea, Casus, Casea, Aloe, Casea, and one other ingredient. Can't remember it right now. I know it's in scripture. I'll find it. But that's the blend, and it's so beautiful. And I put it on, and then I go about, I even do a little swish across my under nose, like you can just kind of smell the fragrance of, of his garments. You know, with the maidens fell in love with the aroma that he carried. Mm -hmm. and we carry his aroma. And I just take that oil and I do the forehead and I do the voice box and the eyes to see, the ears to hear, the mouth to speak, the heart to understand, the hands to bless and pray. And then I just go, swish, right under the nose. But I, I can smell Well, I'll tell you, I was... I was at the intracoastal and I'm sitting in the rocking chair and I'm saying, oh, what's that fragrance? And now the mind is starting trying to discern in the spirit and thinking, okay, it doesn't smell like beach, beach, you know, body sun protection. It doesn't smell balmy. It doesn't smell coconutty. It doesn't smell like a woman's perfume or a man's cologne, mm -hmm. but it was so sweet, ever so light. That was so sweet. And I certainly knew it wasn't the water. Yeah. No. Right. No, no, it wasn't the water. It was so sweet and so light. And I said, oh, Lord, be it you or not you, I'm thinking of you. And that's all that matters. But it was beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. So great. So it's been a wonderful week. Um, Thank you, God, for all that you've you've given to us, and all that you've provided. You take us through sleep. You take you wake us up every day. I look at this bed right beside me here, and I say, oh. Oh. "What is that noise?" I don't know. That's terrible. Mm -hmm. Rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Second mm -hmm. heaven, get off our airways. The blood is against you. you take authority over that in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Mm. But anyways, as we sleep tonight, let us sleep in sweet peace. We've gone about 20 minutes over time, but 
this time is eternal and I'm grateful that you came online and joined in prayers of agreement and praise and worship and just hearing his still small voice. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Stomachs are healed. I did hear that. Stom stomachs are healed. Thank you, Lord. For whosoever stomach, I'll take it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Whoever whoever needs that, just take it. Thank you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. He is an awesome God. He is marvelous. He is wonderful in all of his ways. And I would just be happy as a gatekeeper at his door than to be anywhere else in the whole world. But I'm holding him to the promise that he's preparing a room for me. And I can't wait to see the room past the door where I'm keeping at the gate. <laughs> so, I love you, my sisters. Amen. And um, I will share with you, Maria, because you've been so faithful on the prayer line and supporting the ministry, you know, coming to uh, worship and, and offer your, your dance and all the offerings that you've given to me personally, the ministry, and just want to say thank you and God bless you. And Shelly, also being, you know, uh, in my right hand, in my right hand, Shelly is, you know, intercessor and armor bearer for me. And um, when I come to you and say, please shed light, you know, I, I need godly wisdom and I ask you to pray and, you know, sort things out with me and for me, you do. And, and I appreciate every offering of prayer time financial support and all that you've done and i just want to thank you and and give you both that that thanks publicly amongst ourselves you know it's not a crowd of twenty thousand, but it's giving honor where honor is due and i thank you both and i bless you in the name of jesus and um, i will share if if you all have time to stay on another five minutes or less that um i did send some dates out to uh, Shelly, so April to October, when I'm back in Massachusetts, we will be doing a monthly uh, healing healing room. Um, and we are going to do a monthly workshop for more uh, discipling of God's people that are, uh, they can be seeking, they can be newbies, but really getting the remnant ready really saying look you know i even want to show i want to show this the shocking prophecies mm -hmm. That's nice. um this is uh sadhu sanda sabaraj from india wow and i got these dvds because he was on jim baker show and Whenever I say the name of a fallen minister, I say, are we not all still able to be deceived and fallen? Mm -hmm. And as mature believers, should we not all be foregoing to see that they are restored and built up? Because it is especially the leaders, like all of us on this line right now, are all leaders. Are we not the ones that he is mm -hmm. after to attack and take down mm -hmm. to be fallen? Amen. I just like to Amen. say that when I mention names. Now, yes, there are those that are fallen, need to be restored, but shouldn't be back on the pulpit. I, I know they're out there. I, I know that there are the wolves, but they do need healing and they need deliverance. And let's see that. And unless they're totally restored, don't go back on the pulpit, please. We haven't got time for that. We need to be discerning. We need to make sure that who we're listening to, you know, is not a wolf in sheep's clothing and pray for not falling into deception and pray for those to be delivered, those that have fallen out of it. But a monthly workshop to prepare the church to know spiritual discernment, to know to break off generational curses, because a lot of the attacks that we get are because doors have been opened, if not by us directly by the family members, by the iniquities and the things that they have practiced and done. Let's face it, we're in 2018. And if we're here in the bodily tent in 2018, that's 
how many decades, centuries of generations before us that we need to pray for revelation to close doors, to cut off generational curses. What we see in our bloodlines manifesting. Manifesting, dis-ease manifesting. So we want to stop that manifesting by closing the door with the blood and the word, mm -hmm. by taking authority and cutting it off and telling it where to go and how to get there and how to stay there and pray the blood of Jesus to close that door that no enemy or man could open and that his blood seal the prayers. So yes. that's what we're going to be working on. It's going to be cutting edge. I have Apostle Jonas Clark down here that I received a kit. I did a quick live Facebook thing on it. And it has, I hope they're DVDs. Um, because of the workshops, I'd like to present and show the DVDs. So what I need to find out, if anybody knows, I think one minister we know of in Plymouth, Breeze, she knows how to get something on a laptop. If I, if I play that CD on my laptop, like I do when I'm watching it here, I need to know how do I connect it to a projecting screen or a wall so that everybody in the meeting can see it. Mm -hmm. So that's what I need. If I need to purchase something or rent something, I need to know what it is and, and, and get work on that. But I'm looking at at least two days a month to have a workshop in a healing room. The healing room is going to be 7.30 to 9, an hour and a half. It'll be Christian music, either instrumental or soft, slow healing music, love songs to the Lord, and love songs that the Lord sings back to us for healing. Um, and that'll be once a month and then a workshop once a month. And definitely every workshop has praise, worship, dance, flags, and all of that to create the atmosphere of cleansing mm -hmm. and his presence to abide with us before we go into any teaching. And I think because the group is small, uh, the rent won't be so bad for renting the room if I can get it at Hobby Wheeler for these occasions. Um, and I think it'll be ample enough that even to make like little chicken and tuna sandwiches in those little rolls mm -hmm. and water and maybe coffee and you know a dessert fruit mm -hmm. um, so that people like can take a break so we can have the workshops from uh, 10 to 2 but we can have like you know 45 minutes for lunch and it's there and you don't have to travel and you don't have to park and you don't have to spend money mm -hmm. okay, so it'll be mm. all there and um that's what's on my heart. So if we can all keep that in prayer and keep each other in prayer and um, I mean. bring the people, Lord, who need you, including the church, because we never stop needing him. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. So that's my story. I'm sticking to it. And uh, oh, yeah, I had a real dream last night. And I'm saying, oh, Lord, is that prophetic or is that an enemy trying to scare me? But I didn't feel scared. It had to do with a situation that I know about that's going on at a congregation. And I was sitting at a table and I saw the people in this particular congregation, which is very small, probably. Uh, close to 200, but only about 25, 30 regular, uh, regularly attend. Then they only come for the feasts. And I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden this man comes through the door, and he's got one of those curved swords. Oh. And I mm. saw the blood on it. And the blood was in color. And I looked at him, and he said, Where's the person who's responsible? And I just looked. And even though I knew, I wasn't going to say it. And so he looked like he was going to take a test drive with me as the object. And I just remember sitting at the table and I looked up to heaven and I put my hands folded. And I just said, oh, Jesus, have mercy on me and forgive me of all my sins. And I'll be with you very soon. And I looked, and he walked away. Mm. I said, well, okay. 
if there's any interpretation, I didn't receive anything. And then a few nights before that, <clears throat> I don't remember, I remember there were, there was at least one other person, if not more, but I didn't see anybody, but I knew there was presence and I knew it was people, not spirits. And I looked and I had to go from here to there. And I said, well, if anybody's going to cross over, I know I'm not because look at the spider web. And we know what that represents. And then I looked again and I went, oh, I ain't going anywhere near there because now there's two. And they were that perfect Charlotte's web, you know, that perfect, you know, almost like an octagon within an octagon within an octagon. And they were huge. And there was one and then a space and then another. I said, well, I'm not walking through it. I ain't getting entangled in that. And I woke up. Wow. So if there's any interpretation, sometimes I receive it. Sometimes I don't. And I don't make things up. So I didn't hear anything. So if anybody receives any interpretation, I'm open to receive it. Thank you. Mm. And thank mm. you, Lord, because we know you are the interpreter and that you download it. Amen. Amen. Glory. So that's that, ladies. Anything to Some, share? Sometimes sometime when you have the dream. Yeah. Um, I feel because I, when I have a dream, mm -hmm. sometimes maybe about God, they use some, like a person, like a, maybe preacher, sometimes the pastor, sometimes... Um, people they going to send to the message complete you know like uh when you passed out all the dream when you didn't um uh, found those you know like a like a now like a today it's because god they going to send you some person they preach and they told you everything they going to be beside you mean like to down the road, I'll receive an interpretation. The interpretation. Okay, thank you. Thank because you. Uh, so, uh, Sunday, um, I supposed to go to my church, but God, they put in feeling to me to go to to drive it two hour to Southbridge. Okay. I went down there to another church because I know the pastor, but because God, they sent me to, to this place because the person that goes preach, he sent me the message. He said, he told me everything and the dream that I have it before. Oh, wow. They do. Wow. It was, I was, my body was like running all the place. Oh, wow. I was checking. I was, he told me, he say, writing, he talking about the David. And then he say, the, the David is talking about something, my, my business. He say, you have to do this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Writing, 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 writing. Wow. Wow. And then I say, I say, wow, something that it was a miracle. Mm. So it was, it's, it's not like when they was preached, it's like it was God there mm. in the same place. Yeah. And then that's how the, the feel, I was feeling. Wow. It was, a, it was a beautiful spirit in my life. Yes. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. Beautiful. I'll wait on the Lord. Yes, I will. Yes. And, yep. <laughs> He's always worth the wait. Yes. Amen. Thank you. Amen. So, ladies, if there's nothing else to share or... I could stay on all night, but I know you've got, you know, work and jobs and chores and we all do in the morning and 
need good sleep, need to be refreshed, so I don't want to use you. So I'll just say thank you, Maria Shelley. Welcome. Shelley, Maria, thank you so much for joining. I love you. Yeah. We love you too. Um, thank you. Thank you. And we will meet next Tuesday, God willing. And I will make the recording on the part that I recorded and put it out for people who need to hear the prayers and who need to have prayer agreement. They can agree with us as the word goes out, as the prayers go out. But the rest of this has all been private, so not to worry. And thank you all for sharing and praying and agreeing. So I love you guys. Love you too. Know that you can call me anytime for prayer or just to chit chat about the love of Jesus. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Sweet dreams, okay. prophetic dreams. Mm -hmm. Be safe in yeah. the love of God. Same too. Thank you. Good night. Okay. Bye bye. Good night. Bye -bye. Bye. Let's see how I do this now. End the meeting.